Hello and welcome back to Retro Asylum, where, as you can see, I am taking uh, a look and having a play of a Robocop on the ZX Spectrum. It's the 1 to 8K version, so it's all bells and whistles, we've got music, we've got speech, it all loads in one, and unlike the other 8-bit versions, or at least the Commodore and the Amstrad versions, it's got sound effects as well as the music while you play. The MSX version did also have sound effects and uh, unfortunately the music cut out one of the channels whenever you fired or took a hit in that version. So yeah this game is not really an arcade conversion. A lot of people uh, claim that it is but it isn't really. It certainly takes some inspiration from the arcade. But Ocean got the license for Robocop and Orion Pictures. And then they let Data East have the right to the arcade version. I believe they sold them the uh, right to the arcade version. Or licensed it somehow. And uh, yeah, they certainly, you know, the game it is inspired by the arcade. But it's, also got its own levels and in this version Robocop doesn't jump in the Spectrum Amstrad and MSX versions. He feels like that clunky robot that he should be. Uh, in the arcade and on the Amiga and ST and in the C64 version Robocop could jump. Oh and in the Game Boy version as well. But I don't know if it was down to the limitations of just having one button, I guess it wasn't, it was probably more of a design choice and maybe limitations of the machine, but Robocop didn't jump about, and I think it's all the better for it really. So here we are onto the second stage, taken directly from the film. Unfortunately you can't shoot through the girl's dress to hit the guy behind, you've got to try and get his shoulder or whatever part of his body is, uh... ah, there we go, I've accidentally killed her, and killed him, so level's complete, you do lose energy if you shoot the girl, so I was quite lucky there. Now a lot of people say this game is really hard, and... I guess it can be, it is more of a memory test. I've not played it in a long time, but yeah, I'm getting hit. <laughs> I'm getting hit, but um, yeah, I, I do think it is quite easy actually. I'll say that, let's see if I actually finish it. So this section is fairly similar to the arcade, I guess, but um, in the arcade, he gets halfway across this road and then he can, then he gains his gun actually, he doesn't have the gun up until this point. So yeah, it's quite different. Graphics are by Dawn Drake, uh, she also works on Target Renegade and Batman the movie for the ZX Spectrum and Amstrad. Um, probably not my favourite graphic artist, I found her work uh, I mean, it was very good, but it wasn't as detailed as I'd like. I preferred her, uh, the guy who she took over from, Ronnie Fowles. He'd done the graphics on Renegade 1 and some of Combat School. Uh, I would have loved to have seen what he was done with this. But unfortunately, he left Ocean before Target Renegade and Rover got the work on Jonathan Dunn wrote the music. Um, I'm not sure if he actually made the Spectrum music. Um, I think Mike Lamb actually converted it from the C64. I could be wrong. I don't think that Jonathan Dunn actually, although he's credited for the music in the ZX Spectrum versions of all the games that he worked on, 
I'm not sure if he actually uh, done the music himself. I think as put through some sort of conversion process. So this is quite easy. Um, although occasionally you do get stuck because you know the, the faces, the parts of the face are very similar. You might have to look for the odd pixel here and there. Actually, eyes up. Ah, there we go. Yep. I just think this game works so well. It really does. It was in the charts for 18 months, the yeah, ZX Spectrum version. I'm not sure if it was actually number one for 18 months, but it's certainly bouncing around those charts for a long time. This is probably my favourite level. Look at the way Robocop walks up the stairs when I'm not getting shot at this. Oh my god, I'm not doing too well. This is the uh, the level that came as a demo with Crash Magazine. Try and seek it out, because it does play ever so slightly different. As I mentioned, you can make the bad guys bounce on the bullets. But as soon as I played the demo, I knew that this game was going to be massive, which it played so well. But yeah, when Robocop goes up the stairs, It just gets, it just looks like the film, you know, it's um, that animation, the way the screen moves. No other version really captures that feel of Robocop clunking up the stairs. It doesn't work going down the stairs so well. It doesn't look bad, but uh, yeah, just the way the screen moves and the animation, superb. And of course, this team went on to make Batman the movie uh, for the ZX Spectrum and the Amstrad. I don't think that was as good, unfortunately. It wasn't bad, but uh, I certainly preferred Robocop. I think with this, obviously, these sections here, you know, the shoot map sections, are the main game. And you've got the shooting gallery and the ID sections and they break up the gameplay nicely enough whereas with Batman you had two levels Batman climbing and you know, firing his battering around but the game was broken up into sub levels a lot more and for me it just didn't work as well Come on. Oh. No, I died. Oh, God. But there's me saying it's easy. It's clearly not. Let's see if I can do it again. Without dying this time. Up we go. Grab the bullets. Yeah, what a soundtrack. It's the same music pretty much throughout the game. Obviously, the tart music would go on to be used on the Ariston advert. That was the Game Boy version, though. Same tune. Grab the baby food. Full health. I bet I don't leave the level with full health. Look at that, though, the way that moves. Amazing. I really wish that Mike Lamb and Don Drake and Jonathan Dunn had worked on the second and third games for the Spectrum. Uh, Jonathan Dunn was part of the Robocop 2 team. It had good music, but it wasn't in-game. It's just harp music. And that game was just way too hard. Robocop could jump and the controls were really weird. I think you pulled down for him to jump. 
diagonal down. It just, oh, it was so hard. It wasn't fun at all. Whereas this, you feel like you can, you actually stand a chance, I feel. So up we go. It's a shame, uh, with this version, the bad guys disintegrate. Obviously, they fall down if they're on a platform. But in the Amstrad version, there is more frames of animation that actually collapse to the floor rather than disintegrate. I guess it was a memory thing. And personally, I feel like the Amstrad version, when Robocop's walking, it just looks really odd. And some of the bad guys, the way they walk as well, looks dodgy. And, you know, it's the same people who worked on the game. It's uh, Dawn Drake done the graphics for both versions, and programmed by Mike Lamb. So, I'm not knocking it, it just, to me, this version just felt a little bit slicker. This is Prime Directive 4, isn't it? Arrest Mode Directive 4. So we can't draw our gun. Uh, there's Ed 209. I think he's a bit too small, don't you think? The same thing. He should be a lot bigger and a bit more menacing. Just take him out of three punches. <laughs> Yeah, it's a shame they didn't draw him bigger, because you know, the sprite doesn't actually move around. Should have been a bit more imposing like it was in the movie. This is quite a good level. Introduces the lifts. Ooh. Not got much energy. Topped up a bit. So yeah, let me know what your memories are of this version, if you played it, and if you haven't played it, and you think that the other versions are superior, don't just go by looks, give this a try, see how it plays, because I can assure you, this one plays really, really well. Now I've played all the other versions, the MSX version looks pretty much identical, but uh, unfortunately it's played with slow down, it's, it's just one of those conversions, it's probably done in a couple of days, where it's just running the Spectrum code, and uh, it's a bit of a mess, it's a shame the MSX didn't get its, its own coded version of Robocop, but you know, it was published by Ocean, and the MSX wasn't too popular in the UK, unfortunately. Another good level. Get a good weapon in this. I guess my only complaint is it does, uh, you know, it, it feels very similar each level. It's a shame that there wasn't some different bad guys. I mean, there is one on this level. Uh, he's got a different weapon. Which we have, there he is. That's the only other enemy really in the game. Ah. Yep, he's dead. Love this gun. Look at that. All three of them gone. Top of the head. Just like firing a football at people. It wipes them out. A pity you don't get this earlier in the game, really. <laughs> you know, if, when you complete it, the game actually loops around, so it would be nice if you took this gun with you all the way through. Start off on level one again with it. Two 
two shots it took to take care of Ed Throne He does it with one, doesn't he, in the uh, film? Right, on to the last level. Dick Jones. I forgot that you fired back. You can't knock him through the window, really. That would have been fun. And there we go. All complete. Nice shooting, Murphy. You have rescued the president. However, the fight against crime is never over. So, yeah, the game just loops around. It gets harder. But uh, I don't feel I can be bothered to go through it again. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the uh the video and hopefully we'll see you soon bye bye